Daniel Craig bids farewell with the longest, darkest James Bond movie yet. This week we check out No Time to Die. No Time to Die is Daniel Craig's fifth and final installment as the legendary secret agent. With this, he embarks on pretty standard Bond stuff. There's an inventive, high-tech bioterrorism plot, villains looking for revenge, and a woman caught in the crossfire. Despite these similar beats, it does enough different with this story that makes it worth the near three-hour running time. The first 90 minutes or so of this might be the most action-packed Bond has ever been. True detective director Kerry Fukunaga has 007 beating bad guys with all kinds of weapons. It is pulse-pounding. The problem with that is the movie has to eventually slow down, and when it does, it tends to get lost in the woods of its laundry list of characters. Christoph Waltz as Blofeld is underused, Rami Malek as a new villain is uninteresting, and some new and returning faces to MI6 deserve more screen time. This is also the most emotional and somber Bond movie we've ever seen, outside of maybe Skyfall, that is. It gets very self-serious towards the end, so if you're looking for that cheeky Bond from the past, like Sean Connery, this will not be your movie. But I think it earns its seriousness with a solid final performance by Craig and a supporting turn by Leia Sado. So if you're a fan of Craig's version of Bond, this will be the shaken, not stirred martini you've been waiting years to see. I give No Time to Die three and a half stars out of five. No Time to Die is rated PG-13 for language and violence. It is playing exclusively in theaters. To see all this going on in St. Joseph, check out St. Joe Live and the St. Joseph Top 5 every Thursday and Friday in the St. Joseph News Press. And join Bob Schultz and I next week as we talk The Last Duel. Until then, we'll be live in movies. See you later.